understand that. Okay, this is brakes test two. Uh, if a vehicle owner reports that the brakes lock up during normal use, you should check the fluid level of the reservoir and then look for leaks. No, I would not do that. That's not what you should do. Have you ever had somebody pull up into the shop? You've got a shop, you all, you all work your shop over there, and you feel they're talking about it, the brakes locking up, or I'm gonna go and I'm gonna find out which um, caliper is hot or drum or whatever. Good to have a temperature gun, you know. Where's the hot wheel? If you got a wheel that's 390 degrees and the rest of them are like 175, you know that 390 degree wheel is probably your trouble. Okay, now what what if you got a caliper that's uh, holding the wheel all the time? What do you do about that to determine if it's the caliper? <laughs> Excuse me, or something else. It can be, huh? Check and see if there's fluid coming to the caliper. Say that again now. Check and see if fluid is getting to the caliper. Yeah, well, you mean see if fluid is getting to the caliper? Yeah. Well, actually, fluid's getting there or it wouldn't be locked up. You know what I mean? Brake All right, so, bleeders. huh? So brake bleeders, so you can ease the pressure. That's right. I mean, if you release, if you open the brake bleeder and it releases the pressure and the brake and the wheel will turn freely, what does that tell you? That the caliper is not the problem, right? Got that? So we're, we're released the brake. So what is the problem? Where do we need to go? Uh, the well, I'd probably suspect either that hose or something wrong with the master cylinder, or if it's got ABS, there's something up in there, which is kind of like the proportioning valve. Uh, the proportioning valve is actually supposed to keep pressure from getting to the rear brakes until the front ones are fully applied. But basically, long and short of it is you can find it if you go back up the line, you know, looking for that. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, number two, when the driver releases the brake pedal, a spring returns the piston and the brake assembly to its original position. That's actually true. That's talking about the master cylinder there. Um, as the piston and the brake assembly returns, brake fluid flows from the high pressure chamber. No, it flows back. What do you think? How do you do that? What does it do? Does it flow around? Does it flow? Is it, is it allowed to go around that uh, brake, Little, that rubber yeah, uh, uh, grommet yeah, uh, on that thing? So that one there. So it, it, of course, from the high pressure chamber would mean what? That would mean leaving the high pressure chamber going to the brakes. It's not going to do that when the pedal is returning, is it? Got it? Front wheel drive vehicle has a dual braking system. If one system fails, the other may not be able to stop the vehicle alone. That's actually true. Uh, may not be able to is a good way to, to gauge an answer like that. Um, but let me tell you something else. On some of these uh, vehicles, the brake booster, the uh, part that uh, goes up in the master cylinder piston and actually applies it, that thing's adjustable. And I've actually put a brake booster on before that it was maladjusted and the brakes wouldn't release because of the brake booster. And so if you're thinking your brake booster may be the problem, how would you determine that? I'm basically going to take the caliper, I mean the brake, the master cylinder nuts loose and let the master cylinder move away from the brake booster and see if everything unlocks. See what I mean? Where it's like easing pressure off the piston on the master cylinder? Well, you're basically, the, if the rod in, on the, uh, on the uh, jet, uh, booster is out too far and you release, you move the uh, master cylinder away from the booster, that's telling you that you've got a maladjusted, you know, especially if somebody's just put a booster on there and now the brakes are locking up. You know, and there, there is basically it's a sort of like an interference uh, nut that's like got a ball on the front of it. You can turn it in or break it loose. But anyway, I've run into that on a Dodge truck years ago, um, and there is an adjustment on that, so don't don't fall into a trap. Um, of, let's see, front disc brakes respond more quickly than drum brakes. Well, that's pretty just pretty true because they're actually pretty well in contact. Boom, just right quick. A proportioning valve is a valve that delays fluid flow to the front brakes. Is that true or false? That's false. You got to delays them to the front, to the back brake. A metering valve reduces the amount of braking force the rear wheels to prevent rear wheel lockup. And you know both of those are kind of false there. Got it. Uh, during master cylinder bench bleeding, bleed lines are run uphill to clean to a clean catch container. Yes. If you run them uphill, what happens then? Uh, I want the fluid to go into the catch container, right? But 
if you go uphill with that, you got some issues. Right? Although the air, it seems like, would go uphill better, wouldn't it? If you could. But the clean catch container doesn't need to be uphill. <laughs> you hear me? I mean, basically, the bleeder's already at the top of the hydraulic system. I mean, as high as it needs to be to let that air out. Uh, now, let me ask you this. That, or since they were bleeding brakes, and we're watching these clear hoses that we got going into our little catch bottles, and we're seeing all kinds of fluid that doesn't have any air in it coming out to our bottles. Does that mean that all the air is out of the system? Tighten them up. Still feels spongy. Well, my goodness, I'm getting clear fluid, good clear fluid coming through all of my little things into my bottles, but I've still got a spongy pedal. Furthermore, sometimes the pedal, and you better be real careful about this, sometimes the pedal will feel really good until you start the car, and then it'll go to the daggum floor because you ain't got all the air out of there. To begin with, yeah. That's what happened to me when that problem with my brakes happened. Yep, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, what the deal is, just because you're getting clear fluid with no air bubbles in it doesn't mean there's no air in the system. It means the air just hasn't made it to where you can see it yet. Because you can have a big bubble working its way. You got it? You got that right, Melissa? Big bubble can be coming. And before it ever gets back there where you can see it, you say, well, I'm getting straight old clear fluid. It's got to be done. I'm, you know, I'm through bleeding my brakes. Well, why is it still spongy? To begin with, you need to go and see if it's got ABS. Is there something special you've got to do? If it's got to be ABS on some of them, you've got to run the pump motor. Some of them you've got to push some little buttons. You know, just follow the procedure. And remember what I told you last week when we were talking about Gene's Nissan uh, Frontier. Make darn sure you follow the sequence of bleed in the manual. It's not any harder, and it makes it cause, I mean, save you a lot of work. So... Consider the fact that you may be bleeding them in the wrong order, in spite, you know, because you can't assume that they all bleed the same. Um, but bench bleeding is what we were talking about here, and I kind of got it sidetracked here. What's the bench bleeding? You got to you got to cheat on that. You know, what's what's the purpose in bench bleeding? Let's say that you got a master cylinder that has to be replaced because when you hit the brake, it seems to be okay, and then it falls out from under your foot. There's no air in the system. you are basically got a bad master cylinder. Okay, if you're if you're lazy like me, you don't want to have to bleed the entire brake system just because you replace a master cylinder because that stinks. Mm -hmm. You know, just don't get any air in there if we can help it. I don't want to have to go through all that. Okay. I mean, you know, sometimes you got to. If you got to, you got to. But if you don't have to, I want to take the master cylinder, the new one, out of the box. And a lot of the times, you might even see they got these little uh, clear lines that you can cone into those little uh, places where fluid comes out of the master cylinder and you come over into the master cylinder reservoir and you basically are going to work that piston in that master cylinder reservoir until you've got all the air out of that master cylinder and there's pure fluid. You got it? And then you, with those still in place, you stick that thing on there and then you put your brake lines on real quick and if there's any air in there, it won't be a tiny bubble. And you've, bled, you've bench bled your master cylinder, put it back on the vehicle, you got a good firm pedal and you're done. You know. However, if you don't bench bleed it and you put it back on, you're going to fill your whole system up with air and then you're going to say, hey, Joe, come over here and pump this pedal for me for 30 minutes or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Bench bleed the master cylinder is going back into the reservoir. You're just you know, pushing the air out of the master cylinder. It's really important to do that. When forcing the air out of the master cylinder doing a bench bleed, the pistons can be moved using a wooden dowel. That's, good. That's a good way to do it. Uh, during a master cylinder bench bleed, the primary and secondary pistons will usually need to be pushed on only once to drive all the air from the cylinder. Whoa! That's not true. Many vehicles with front disc and rear drum brakes have a four-function combination valve. False. All right. The output piston in the hydraulic system exerts five times the force that a apply piston exerts. Why is the output force greater? A, the output piston moves five times as far. B, the area of the output piston is five times as large as the area of the apply piston. C, the area of the apply piston is one-fifth as large as that of the apply piston. Uh, D, the pressure in the remote cylinder is five times as great as the pressure in the master cylinder. Okay. The pressure is going to be the same everywhere. But who said who said what? Boy, B, yeah. 
because uh, you basically, we talked about Pascal's law when we did basic brakes. To multiply the output force of a hydraulic system, you do what? You use an output piston with a larger head. We just talked about that in the previous question. And an integral master cylinder, what happens? What's an integral master cylinder? What does integral mean? Yeah, okay, that's uh, we're using that logic. Which one of those answers is right? The reservoirs are in the master cylinder assembly. Right? They're part of it. What do you think of? What 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 pops into your mind? What have you seen that on? Old cars. That the whole darn thing is made of cast iron in the reservoir part of it. So when the reservoir on top of the master cylinder was like that? It's all made into it. No, no, no. Now, so, so, when, so when the, the reservoir is on top of the master cylinder, there's like a little gasket that seats that out? Yeah, that's not in, like integral like the there, yeah. Side, like and a lot of times when you buy a master cylinder nowadays, you'll get a master cylinder, but you won't get a reservoir depending mm -hmm. on who you get it from. You gotta reuse the old one. Yeah. And does it, they get, do they give you new seals on there? Well, those second-rate amateur parts manufacturers. You know yeah. we need new seals. The other ones could be bad. We have that separate. Huh? We have that separate. Oh, okay. Who has uh, flashed codes out of the ABS system on the Ranger already? Johnny's done it. Who else has done it? And uh, Tyler did it. Who else did it? You got? Would you guys know how to do that? If you, yeah. there's, there's a sheet on it. That ain't hard. How long did it take you guys to do that worksheet? Right. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. It's a ten-minute worksheet. So what's your excuse? How come you haven't done it? Okay, well, well, you've pulled off that engine and done some worksheets, though, haven't you? Yeah. Well, all right, then. <laughs> you didn't have an excuse again. <laughs> you're, no. just, you're close to being done with that engine, aren't you? I am done. You are done with it? And there's one thing I need to plug up. We need some CLR, though. So. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to have to stab the transmission back in. Who pulled the transmission out? Lundy and... And, that, and since Lundy's kind of bogged down on the Cadillac, we have to get somebody else to stab it back in there. Right? And, uh, He's yeah. Huh? It's a rear wheel drive. It's rear wheel drive. Yeah. yeah. You need to you need to be in on that job, don't you? Because you you pulled it out, right? And I guess uh, since he's got lots of experience swapping out transmissions, he probably could help you with that. Since it's his truck job anyway. And he's got plenty of work to do on his Cadillac. Okay. That Cadillac will drive out here today though. Um, I sure hope so. A composite <laughs> master cylinder is what? It's plastic and cast iron parts. Yeah, plastic reservoir attached by rubber grommet. Actually, aluminum usually. Ordinarily, if you see it, a plastic uh, reservoir, you're going to see aluminum master cylinder. Uh, number 15, the replenishing port. And I'm going to tell you something funny as I'm talking about these ports and everything. Uh, I fixed brakes for years and years and years and years, but I never took a test on them. And I just fixed, I'd fix brakes and fix brakes and fix brakes. I'd just fix brakes to where I knew, you know, new brakes inside out. And then I sat down there and Ford uh, wanted us to take some tests on brakes. And they started hitting me with all kind of words I didn't know the meaning of. You know, compensating port, replenishing port. I didn't know what those was. You know, when I first sat down to just take that little test there at the dealership, you know, on the computer, I crashed and burned on that darn thing because I missed too many of those questions. I said, this really stinks. I thought I could fix brakes, you know. But, I mean, this, this is the kind of thing that you learn that, you know, a lot of people don't ever think about. You can fix brakes all day long without getting involved with this. Number 15. The replenishing port, A, is located toward the front of the reservoir, B, allows fluid to enter the high-pressure chamber, C, allows fluid to enter the low-pressure chamber, D, prevents a partial vacuum from developing ahead of the piston. Now, you know, if this was on an ASE test and it was a pass or fail, and this was the last question, and you knew that if you missed this one, you'd fail the whole test, would you be stressed out? Yes. Especially if you paid $242 to take all eight tests and you needed to pass them all? Or whatever. Um, okay, number 15 is actually C. It allows fluid to enter the low pressure chamber. Number 16, which is not true of vehicles with disc brakes and a quick take up master cylinder? Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Calipers have special seals that quickly pull the piston back. Caliper piston must move a longer distance because the pads are farther from the rotor. Uh, the secondary piston moves in a step bore cylinder. That means that part of the cylinder is a different size from the other part. That's basically what that is. Let's see. The purpose of bleeding a hydraulic brake system is to do what? All the above. You like that answer there? All the above? Now here's something else. If you work the brake pedal too fast, 
when you're bleeding it, you need to make smooth, even pumps. If you pump it really, really, really fast, you're liable to whip up air in there and make trouble for yourself. You don't want to do that, do you? You don't want to make any trouble. All right. Now then, let me see. Oh, I lost my place. Why is brake fluid pushed out during manual bleeding? Does the bleeder create a bleeder valve create a vacuum when you open it? No. Does the bleeder hose act like a siphon? No. Does depressing the service brake pedal raise the hydraulic pressure? Yes. What is the service brake pedal? Why do they call it the service brake pedal? I mean, why would I? Why didn't I just say the brake pedal? Well, is there more than one brake pedal? Yeah. What's the other one? Parking brake. Give that man a cigar. <laughs> the parking brake. So they're going to say the service brake pedal so they can delineate which one. You see how important it is to communicate well in this business? Uh, did, did you ever fall in a trap trying to fix a car over there at Donnie's shop uh, whenever they probably didn't communicate to you well? And you fixed the wrong darn stuff or you didn't they do... do yeah, you just do all kinds of stuff because there's no good communication. And these silly service riders that would write these, and I've, I've brought this one up a lot, but it just burns me up whenever you get a work order that says something like, windshield won't separate rain from water. What? <laughs> that was a real write-up. I'm not making that up. You can't make this stuff up. I had one that said, washer fluid not working. Yeah, washer fluid. Like, how is the washer fluid not working? It's fluid. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, the pump's not the windshield out. washer's not working. Or... You know, the guy would say, this one guy says, <laughs> this one guy wrote this work order, and you had three repair lines, repair A, repair B, repair C. They don't just write everything down. They say, the first thing you're supposed to be doing is finding out why this doesn't work or what <coughs> wrong here. The second thing you're supposed to be doing is finding out. Now, you may be, they may be related to one another, but they actually have them written on different repair lines, right? Also... If you're putting a part on there, then you need to know which repair line to charge the part out on. If you're fixing something to do with the brakes, you charge it out on that line. Now, this is dealership stuff. Well, this warranty ticket comes through there, and he tells me, this van won't start unless I turn on the left turn signal. You have, or you have to turn on the left turn signal to start the van or something like that. And I'm looking, and I said, wow, these other write-ups look kind of interesting, but I'm really interested in this one. So I dug and hunted and poked around and looked in there, and I found out somebody had wired it up that way. I had a relay in there. Wow. So I went back out to the service advisor and I said, Curtis, what's going on with this thing? He goes, oh, I just put that on there so you know how to start it. What? <laughs> Why didn't you put a sticky note on it instead of writing it on a repair line? That way I would have known I weren't supposed to fix it. You see what I'm saying? And he didn't act like, he didn't even think it was a big deal. But if you do it wrong, you're going to cause a bunch of other people hurt, you know, a bunch of work. Of time. Yeah, I know. I mean, I used to have all kinds of issues with those guys writing up stuff like that, you know. Okay, let me see here. Um, the purpose <coughs> of OSHA is to assure, as far as possible, safe and helpful working conditions and to underwrite workers' compensation programs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, are they supposed to provide material safety data sheets? Yes. What? No. What about research and produce ergonomically designed tools? No. What does ergonomic mean? Ergonomic is, doesn't hurt your wrist. Doesn't feel bad. Feels good, doesn't cause injury when you use it, and all that kind of thing. So what about preserving human resources? I'd go with preserving human resources. Yes, that is a pretty good answer there, preserving human resources. That sounds like a governmental term, too, doesn't it? OSHA. Preserving human resources. What's, that, what's OSHA stand for? Yeah, there you go. All right, let's see here. Which of the following steps is done first during master cylinder bench bleeding? Say it's mounted in a vice. <laughs> master cylinders mounted in a vice. He's right. Which of the following steps is done last during master cylinder bench bleeding? It's removed from the vice. They're attached to the <laughs> no, you're going to get rid of the bleed lines. Now, I'm I'm sort of antsy about getting the bleed lines off because I'm afraid that, that that fluid will trickle out of there and air will get up in there and I'll be back where I started. You know? I mean, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my finger over the holes or something. Like that. Now then, you got a few minutes. Go through this brakes to flush or not to flush handout, and do this other test. Okay. You got it. This is basically true false. There's ten true false questions, and 
I want you guys read that handout now, word for word. It's not very long. It's really a good little piece of information that you need. Huh? <laughs> so me and your definition is not very long, we're totally different. 